It's a it's an intense song, you know. It's about a, a really shattery kind of feeling to me, like some trauma happened then, or some exactly, you know. And that, so that's what I was feeling. It wasn't like right. it's kind of like feeling into how that how that might have been like. That's exactly yeah. That's the the first song was addressing the wounding that occurred. There's a lot of wounding that occurs at that time in life, 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when we, we have our spirit guides, we have our connections to the power animals in the lower world and the teachers in the higher world until we reach that stage of life. And then we have to be taught and choose whether to continue with that mystic mediation between the worlds and those helpers. Mm -hmm. They're there for us, you know, Kids are mortal. That's because they're there. They're always with us, but to actively engage, we have to choose. And if we're not taught to choose, then it just falls away. Mm -hmm. Plus, kids, kids are immortal, you said, because... Well, they're protected. Protected, yeah. Yeah, they have their protection from the, the higher world. You know, the teachers in the higher realm and the power animals in the lower realm that they're born with. That, that's a given until you reach that age stage. And then you have choice, you know, either the ego is established enough to begin separation from the parents. And so protection is part of that bargain. You know, you come in, we take care of you till you reach this stage, and then you've got to start developing the ego. And they say, okay, I'm not you to the parents, I'm not you, I'm my peers, you know, I know it all now. Or I can, you know, I can do whatever. But, but it's, there's a definite separation. I'm not you to the parents and the protection that they came, with, came in with. Mm -hmm. And then they start to discover, you know, well, who are they? They have to discover that. They have to find out for themselves. And they have a little bit of guidance. But, you know, I was wounded also with the Apollo Cassandra pattern at that same time. And my, my mystic was hidden because it really wasn't safe. Our language was still illegal. Our ways were still illegal. I had an advantage because my father was district attorney and he was white. But my mother was still conditioned to hide. And, and, and actually, you know, I don't, I don't bring this out and I'm not, I'm not comfortable bringing it out, but that Apollo Cassandra myth, I told you enough about it that you have a feel for it. You could remind me. I'm, I'm thinking okay, Oedipus were, and that it's related somehow to the parent. It was uh, Apollo, who was our, our dominant thinking mm. jock work, worship adolescence in our collective culture right now. Apollo. Mm -hmm. was the, He ruled the temples at Delphi. And so he ruled the priestesses that had the mystic and the prophecies. And he proposed to Cassandra who was the daughter of the king of Troy. This was the time of Plato. Mm -hmm. And he um, offered her the gift of prophecy, but she rejected his proposal. She didn't want to marry him. And he felt rejected, and so he didn't take away the gift of prophecy, but he told her that, you know, to punish her, she would not be believed. Mm -hmm. And so when the Trojan horse was brought into the, the city of Troy, her father was a king, Helen was her sister, and she had a brother. And she knew the army was inside and that they would destroy the city of Troy. And she tried to tell people, and they didn't believe her, and they didn't listen, and they just wanted to party and celebrate. So she picked up a, a torch from the fire and an axe, and she went after the horse herself. And they stopped her. She had shared her gift. She taught her, her gift to her brother and her sister. They learned, you know, they didn't learn it as well because it wasn't a God-given gift. But Helen, you know, her, her take on it was like the narcissistic view we see right now where she would just skirt the edge and drop little hints like, do you think there could be someone inside that horse? You know, like she wasn't going to pick up a <laughs> torch and an axe. Uh -huh. and, and she wasn't going to be ridiculed like her sister was. She was just like, what do you think? Could there be someone inside that horse? You know? Manipulation. Mm. It didn't work. Nobody paid any attention to her. And so how did this play out with you? What was your sort of... 
So I had the gift of the mystic, but my mother had to hide it because it was a very native gift, mm -hmm. the empath. And in the whole, the whole cultural collective, the lawyers have replaced the mystics. Okay, so everybody knew the mystics are the mediators between the worlds. That we were the talking above about and earlier. Below. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they mediate between the world. The lawyers took over. The patriarchy brought it down to the, you know, the simple human, where lawyers mediate between people who fuss and fuss and fight and can't work things out themselves. And so, but at the time when I was 12 and 13, the Apollo in my class, and, and this is, you know, something that I keep secret. This is one of my life's secrets. And, and it's a very complicated thing, but um, he raped me. And I, I don't know how he knew what he was doing. I didn't know what he was doing. He was like, you know, in my neighborhood. He was the boy next door and all this stuff and it was such a shock when he raped me and I figured out what had happened. It took me forever but I was afraid to tell my mother. And the only person I told was my brother who was a year older. And when we all sat down and talked and the guy said, you know, no one will believe you. Hmm. If you say anything about what the it The lawyer done, said this or the, the The guy that raped me. The, uh, mm -hmm. the Apollo guy. He was so in that archetype. Hmm. It was just the perfect playing out of that archetype. And I had never heard that myth until I was in my class. And we studied that one. And I started to connect the dots. And my mother came to me in a dream and called me Cassandra. Mm. 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 <laughs> so that's when that part of the, the song came. You know, you don't know what to do. You're just 13, those girls are 12, and you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, you're not supposed to know what to do, yeah. you know? And we don't ever know what to do because we're living these human patterns that we're not aware of, these archetypal mythological patterns that we don't recognize anymore in our lives, in our culture, you know? Did the song come to you in a dream or was that something you developed song after that? The song came in a dream. Not the dream where my mother called me Cassandra, but the next dream that was the culmination, mm -hmm. the healing part with the, with the, you know, we we're walking along the river with one of my friends that I had in common with my brother before he was murdered, and his dead body is laying on the rock, and there's a rattlesnake on top of it. And the friend is protective and acknowledges the fear, appropriate fear, and he checks it out, and the rattlesnake is dead, too. So he takes the rattlesnake off the, my brother's dead body. And it's an entrance. It's a passageway into an art exhibition. And on the rocks are these cedar boxes that was my mother's feather boxes, you know. The native kept, you know, we keep our feathers in a cedar box. Our medicine, our connection with the spirit. And, and so the boxes were sitting on top of the rocks, but I, you know, I expected to see some kind of art piece on top of the boxes, but I couldn't see anything. And he took me to, over to the ribbons. He had chosen peach and green, and he wanted me to have them. And I said, he said he didn't like the way they came out. That's my life, you know, the green nurturing and the peach mature feminine. And so um, I agreed, you know. The, the colors were good, but the undertones were not there. So that is what the dream was telling me that I did not already know. And so, you and know, his friend came, and there was some banter between the, the masculine. And then an, another friend his age, that was an older friend, and another friend his, his age came and brought the little girls. And the little girls were singing this, like, chorus. And so um, I didn't get the whole verse. They sang the whole verse, but all I got was that refrain that, that you know, you don't know what to do, you're just 13, those girls are 12, and you don't know what to do. But it made it all okay, and I could tell that it was healing that wound going back to 12 and 13, the wound of the collective and my personal wound. 
so that's the way the song came, you know, that first part came, and then the other part came right after my mother died, six years before, and they came together. I kept, doing, I, I kept trying to record that, you know, do I know what I'm doing part, and I couldn't because I knew it wasn't complete. And then when the other two dreams brought the other two parts, then it felt more complete. Mm. You want to sing that one more time? Right. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. You don't know what to do. You're just 13. Those girls are 12. And you don't know what to do. Do I know what I'm doing? Maybe you can tell. Do I know what I'm doing? Hope I'm doing it well. I know what I'm doing, living in my shell. Do I know what I'm doing, going straight through hell? Lovely human, lovely, lovely, lovely humans. Lovely, 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 lovely humanity. I want to like take the drum and play for you again and have you weave this yeah. um, and also ask what um, how, how did how did that song did it work with your healing any or did it work with how did with the dream and then two dreams and a song came out of that and what what part did that seem to play for you with with any healing or change in your life or what was the effect of, of of channeling that song in a dream for you? Good question, Michael. It was like a, a coming together. It was like looking back over the last almost 50 years of my life and seeing the archetypal pattern and seeing that it is one of the many human wounding patterns and how it, you know, 
wounded me and affected my life and how that evolved into the collective human patterns that I have around me and that we have predominantly in our society right now. You know, so it, it took away a lot of the pain of the particular wound. It explained some of the choices that I made that I have deep regrets in this stage of my life, you know, where I'm looking back at my whole life. What do I want to leave behind? How long am I going to be here? How much time do I have? You know, and, the, and that dark night of the soul wounding, you know, to get out, we have to bring something back to the collective, back to the community. Mm. So having it, you know, with people who can share it. You know, now they, they call it Joseph Campbell calls it the hero's journey, but we're too hero-oriented. We're, look at me, I'm the yeah. greatest narcissistic hero. And that's where our culture is right now, and we kind of shift back to nature. Yeah. Could just be called the journey, I think. Yeah. The deep journey. It's the initiation for the shamanic work, too. Mm-hmm. We have to go through that. That's what people are leaving out now. They're They're so open to shamanism which I think is wonderful and they're learning about it but they think they're doing it when they haven't had the initiation and nobody in their right mind would voluntarily ask to be initiated think about it (laughs) yeah who's going to take that on willingly right the the suffering and the anguish and the terror and the darkness and the deep Deep fortitude that comes with it. It's not optional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a deep place we don't go to without that motivation. And I have a question, Gail. When you're saying lovely human beings, is that a sarcastic comment or is that a desire to like try to forgive or where are you coming from with that emotion? It's a good question. I'm not sure where the dream's coming from. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a question. Mm-hmm. Lovely humans, lovely, lovely, lovely humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lovely, 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 lovely humanity. Are mm-hmm. we being the most human human being? Mm-hmm. Are we being mm-hmm. our most humane mm-hmm. humanity? Mm-hmm. 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 Real question. A, yeah, I really want people fierce to. Fierce question, yeah to think that. I want to give that okay. serious thought. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.